we're talking about hoses, the pump is, is basically two parts. It's, it's the hose, it's the main part, it's the heart of the pump, and the pump making it turn. The hoses are natural rubber hoses, and they have various different types of interiors, um, depending on what product you're, you're pumping. Basically, the inside diameter is what dictates the model, model number of the pump. Um, this is a C15 hose. I believe this is a C40, and they go up to a C100, and this one here is heavy, <laughs> C150. This is our largest hose for our largest pump. If you look inside, you'll see there's two layers to it. And this is a key of, of how these things work. Basically, the outside is always natural rubber. Like I said before, the inside is whatever material works with the material that you're pumping. And in between, there's some threads here. And these threads are the most important part of the hose because this is what gives its rebound. The way it works is the pump squeezes the hose closed. And then once it the roller comes off, it goes back to its natural state. And that's what makes it draw in the material. I'd like to just talk about the lubricant that goes into these pumps. This is a lube here. This pump in particular takes 40 liters, so two of these jugs. Um, it is a misconception that people feel that they have to fill it up halfway. This is not the case. Basically, this is only needs to be filled up to just the bottom. It's got to be enough that when this roller comes down to the bottom, it gets submerged in the lubricant, and then that way it splashes it around, it lubricates the hose, it lubricates the whole pump, and it gets into the bushings and so on. So make sure, if you're not gonna read the manual, when you check in the loop, make sure it's about 40% full. It doesn't have to be all the way up to the middle, just 40%, enough to cover this roller and the hose. And that's enough lubricant. This is a traditional um, roller assembly. Roller assembly consists of the roller, side plates, mounting plate, shaft inside. And this one here has the bushings that we talked about earlier. So these have Teflon bushings. Um, what I want to show you is a prototype that we have that we're going to be using for a higher pressure pump. And I'll show you that in our C-150. I'd like to show you the prototype of a new roller assembly that we're doing for the pumps. Um, this is a roller bearing inside instead of the traditional bushing. Um, same setup, side, roller, so on. Um, this will be offered on the C-65 pumps and up. That's our goal. Uh, much lower maintenance on these ones. And the other reason we, they're very, very beneficial is we're gonna be able to pump, increase the pressure on these pumps. Just gonna talk a little bit about wear and maintenance. These pumps are very simple and they're very low, low maintenance. Basically, the things that wear out is the hose, obviously, as it's roading. Um, the beauty of it, it's the outside of the hose that wears out, not the inside so much. Um, the rollers very rarely wear out, but they do ride on a roller shaft. So that shaft's on the inside there. And we have two types of systems. We have bushings and we have bearings. Bearings are new. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But these here are bushings. So we have a poly type bushing, which has an inside liner that's basically a plastic. And we have a Teflon type. The poly um, is a little easier to detect when they wear because basically you want these to wear first. Therefore, that saves your roller shaft and your roller, and they basically slide on. And what you could do is, when this wears out, this material gets worn down thinner, and when you rotate your roller, you can feel it wiggle. The Teflon is a tougher material. However, it doesn't wear as, have as much material to wear as the poly does. Therefore, it's really hard to detect if it's wearing. So. That one is tough to tell when you wiggle the roller. You can't necessarily feel it on a Teflon. So therefore, with the Teflon, if you're using the Teflon bushings, when you change your hose, it's a good idea to change your, your Teflon bushings. These you can detect, the poly you can detect. However, the Teflon, you just wanna replace them. And they just fit on the roller. This one's just a pop, uh, different material. They just fit inside. What I'd like to do is talk now is about dampeners. An option you can get on parasaltic pump is a dampener. We got suction dampeners and discharge dampeners. Pulse, uh, parasaltic pumps are basically do produce a pulse and a lot of people find that not good in their application. 
So you can use a suction dampener or you can use a discharge dampener. So what I'm going to try and do is just explain why that is the case. So I've got a little demo here. And what I want to try and do here is just show you the reason um, the pulsation is created. So if you're looking at your pump, as the wheels are turning, it draws in from the top. As it draws in, pulls the material, keeps pulling material, and then this roller comes onto the hose. So this one stops pulling, this one basically stops it. So what's happening is, as you're pulling your material, and then it stops, you're getting it to bunch up. And then basically it stops, and then when it gets going again, it's got to take all that energy and pull it out again. If you use a suction dampener, instead of it stopping, it's got somewhere to go. So as you pull it, stops, these pieces basically go into your dampener. And then it's an even pull. And this saves a lot of life on your hose. Okay, and the discharge size, your material is being pushed. So as the roller is coming off the hose in the bottom here, there's, there's a pressure, a vacuum in this hose here, and it basically pulls the material back. So what's happening is this, it's pushing the material out, and then when the roller comes off, it's pulling the material back, and then it stops, and then it pushes again, and then it stops. So by putting in a discharge dampener, it helps with this flow, and then it takes not the complete pulsation out, but the majority of it that it's basically 85, 90% of the pulsation's gone and that helps in flow. We're at the back of a C100, and I just want to show you this little sensor here. Um, this is an RPM sensor. This can be hooked up to main equipment, and it will tell you what the pump's doing for the RPM. That also relates into the flow rate of the pump, but this can be hooked up to um, control panels and other devices. So it is an option that we have, and it's just simply an RPM measurement, a sensor to tell you the RPM of the pump. Okay, I'd like to talk just about another sensor that's an option on these pumps. Generally, there's a um, breather on the pumps and should the hose burst, obviously it opens up inside the pump, the pump has a cavity, it fills up with material and then it will spew out the vent. However, we have an option, we have a sensor here. So if it does fill up the cavity, if the hose bursts, fills up the cavity, material comes up here, this sensor picks it up, and then it can send a message to the controller and controller and shut down the pump. And then you're not having material spew all over the place. 